so uh, any one of you could take this question. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to know when the idea of a film team arose and, and what your thoughts were about that. At the beginning of the trial, Mark Mitten said to me, um, you do realize that you are probably the only bank that has been indicted in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. And I said, oh, yeah, 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 but we're all preparing for trial right now, w whatever. Um, so then the next thing is, um, he actually said, I think a documentary should be made of this. Um, and then I remember he brought in um, Steve James, a director he had worked with on another movie before called Life Itself. And um, he came in and brought Steve James and, and um, Steve James interviewed us, met with Jill and Chantrell. When right. you met Steve James, did uh, his work mean anything to you? Did you like take time to go to look at his films to see what that was like? Um, I knew Steve James already because when I was in college, I saw Hoop Dreams, and it was a really. I always tell everybody I was not into documentaries at all until I saw that one, and that was a very important point in my life and documentary understanding appreciation. So I was quite awed, and my husband, who's not involved in this film at all, and who's not a film person at all, had also seen Hoop Dreams with me, and so he was very awed as well, and he was very impressed. He was like, oh, Steve James, you know, and he made a point to go up to say hello to him. So, yes, he was very, he was definitely someone very, someone that we were very happy to work with. Chantrell, what was your biggest concern about having a film camera capturing this? Um, <clears throat> I had probably my biggest concern other than being camera shy um, was just the task at hand and obviously you know going to trial was a huge thing um, we had to focus on that and every minute every second we had to you know make sure that we were bringing the best defense that we could um, and you know a large part of going to trial you obviously you, you have to be credible um, to the jury, to the judge, um, and that, I think for me, I was afraid that if we were being filmed, and this didn't end up happening, but there was, you know, at one point- You'd be like the real housewives of Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> the cameras weren't allowed ultimately in the courtroom, but that was one concern, you know, just remaining focused on actually defending ourselves and, and the trial, so, um, but that quickly, as I have said before, I, so I wasn't, as well informed um, and hadn't seen Hoop Dreams, although I'd heard of it. Um, That's to say you're younger. <laughs> yeah, we can blame it on that. <laughs> but um, I, when Steve sat down with me, um, it was it was just actually incredible because it was the first time that um, that I think any of us had really spoken to sort of an outside party about what we were going through. You know, we had good friends and family that we were speaking to about this. Um, and so when he Steve interviewed me, I just felt like he, he was just such a down-to-earth, nice and understanding person that I completely opened up, contrary to how I thought I might be during the interview and being on camera and just started everything, emotions flowing and <laughs> so that's what <laughs> happened. That's probably why you saw me crying on the screen. <laughs> Vera, after seeing the film, I wonder if you had any different perspective on what you went through from the film. Hmm, um, I did I actually had a, watching the film, it's actually a very strange thing to watch yourself on camera. Um, never had that experience before. <laughs> so um, one of the things that struck me, which is probably not, not answering your question, was our family dynamic. <laughs> and I mean, I always knew my mother was always <laughs> saying things that were sometimes, you know, rather, um, you know, outrageous at times <laughs> to us. And, you know, um, and, and you know, she was a full blown it, screen comedian. Yes, exactly. And I didn't. And actually, you don't find it funny when she does it to you every day um, <laughs> and, and says the same thing over and over again. So, um, you know, and again, not answering questions, but just watching the dynamics, watching Jill, watching Chantrell, even my father, you know, I, I see his expression in some of the scenes and some very intense moments that we we're going through. Um, in terms of trying to strategize or how we felt in terms of how, um, you know, a opening argument went, how our attorney did, and how, or how the closing argument went. I see how he handles all of us, actually, in his own way. So, um, but, you know, so that was um, very interesting to see.
I wanted to introduce, this is Norman Siegel. Um, he's a very well-known civil rights attorney and he was involved with our case and Sara Lee, his wife, is there. Yes. Um, and I want to acknowledge him to the audience. Um, um, and yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you for your question and if anyone didn't hear it, it, it was, you know, what is your takeaway from this experience? So there's so much. Um, I think <clears throat> one is we all have a sense of idealism, um, you know, coming from. I don't. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm getting emotional now, but that was really nice words. Um, <laughs> so maybe you should go first. But no, I was just gonna say that our parents, being immigrants, um, have always believed in. I think you know the American dream and the system. And then something like this happens, and you walk away feeling like, like literally, and I keep saying this, but no good deed goes unpunished. So then what's left is you become a little cynical um, and less ideal, but I think it's very important not to let that cynicism um, get in the way of you trying to improve and continue to try to contribute to the public good, and I think that this experience has empowered us as a family even more to do that. Um, it's very easy to kind of sit back and sort of give up, <coughs> but with the sort of momentum that's come from this film and the word getting out there and just, sorry, <laughs> hearing, hearing this feedback um, from the public, it's encouraging to know that we still have work left to be done, and it's important. Sorry. But Norman, all your life, I know you've uh, you know been a strong advocate for people's rights, and you have seen throughout your entire career how um, it is so easy for innocent people to be prosecuted, accused, and then found guilty or pleading guilty to the crimes they've never committed before. 97% of all, um, in, I've heard all felony cases, um, federal cases, 97% of people who've been indicted, and you can indict a ham sandwich, 97% um, plead guilty. So that's a lot of people who do not have the wherewithal, the um, um, an ability to push through and go to trial and to be able to um, be exonerated. Um, so I think we need to look at why this happens and, um, and how it happened in our case, and we have to systematically think where we can improve and prevent things along the way um, so that this does not happen again. Um, while this was happening, I kept on thinking to myself, I, I know that I'm actually in a much better position because I am able to afford justice, and a lot of people have, you know, are not able to afford justice. There are many people who are, um, you know, who are uh, who are innocent, who have been, who are on death row, who even, you know, have been, um, who have, you know, been um, put to death because of crimes they've never committed before. So, I'm not sure that answers your question, but it's a discussion that has to be thought out, and 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 we have to think what we need to do. Um, for me, I think that, I mean, all the things that my sister said on, on stage and, and t in what you said just a minute ago, I agree absolutely with. Um, one of the important lessons I think I've learned is the importance of s sticking together when you, with, with your community, with your family, and with your friends. And I keep on saying this, this whatever happened, you saw, this would not have happened without more than one person supporting us, um, helping us us as a family together, and I think that calls for, in a more specific way, organization in order for us to do all the things that we are talking about that need to be done. You, we have to be organized, and we have to um, work together. Um, and you know, that to me was the most important point that I, I, I that I stick to, and I listen to, and I believe to. You have to work with your the people, with your community, with your family, with your friends to get these things that have to be right, that are wrong, that have to be right. 
Great question. How has the yeah. bank recovered? So, um, so the past five years have taken a toll, as you can imagine. We, we were limited about what we can do, how we can do it. Um, and after the trial was over, um, I think there was an expectation, well, okay, everything's done now. You're, you can go back to where you were. And that, that's, that's not true. We had to build brick by brick, step by step to get it. Um, it's now almost two years since the trial was over. And I think we're finally on the path. To, to, to recovery and to reasserting ourselves in the community. Um, the community was supportive of us through the process. I mean, one of the biggest things that is you know, not mentioned in the film is our regulator um, was concerned of a bank run, cons uh, consumer confidence, and so they would run the bank. Um, and that was something that did not happen. So um, that's what I talk about, the support of the community. They had confidence that we would see this through on some level. Um, so, that, so now we just are growing, and, uh, and I'm happy to say that I feel you know, the momentum's there and we are pushing forward. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks very much to Vera, Jill, and Chanterelle Sun. Thank you, thank Tom. You, Tom. Thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Thank you. And thank very you, everybody. Much.